Yo, what's up guys? Uh, we are falling a little bit right now. I wanted to make this video real quick to tell you guys to not be bearish. This still looks like a bullish drop. There is a lot of bids coming in in the short term. Um, I kind of wanted to, like, when we get a red candle, instead of looking at, like, you know, like two hour, right? We just go look at, like, one week. It doesn't look bad, right? Because we are swing traders, guys. Um, if you have a lot of money, you're messing with leverage, and you care about these small swings, but me, like I said, I'm only worried about this range right here, which is accumulation. It is going to play out as accumulation, and ultimately, we are going to go up, right? So that's still my stance, and that's what I've been saying, and nothing's changed. Uh, don't worry about anything. This is actually looking... You know, this is a red candle right now. We'll see how this closes in the next five days, but if we get a green candle close then we'll, we'll, we will be seeing this hidden bullish divergence in play as Bitcoin is bouncing off massive support here, right? I mean, if you just look at everything, guys, this still looks like a, uh, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that we're still going for this move up between like 80K to 100K is our target. So nothing has changed, guys. This is a short-term deleveraging still going on. You know, weekly still looks bullish. I know there's a red cross here on, on this indicator at the background on uh, the one week but most likely this is gonna do something like this and get a double cross before we we finish the top of this cycle we get a big correction right um so look at this point right here one week so we had still we had a higher high divergence to end these hot micro macro high points so you just go down time frames i, I kind of wanted to switch it up i'm gonna go look at I think we need to spend time and focus on total three at this point in the cycle that we're in. We'll do that after. We'll look at every time frame real quick. You can see now the three-day bands are getting pretty tight as well, guys. So the volatility is similar to this point and this point. But the thing is that we already had a big drop. So we are most likely getting close to this type of point and this type of point, right? Because if you look at the percentage drop, right, if you look at... You know, this was like a, you know, I think this was like a 20% drop, right? So we go here and we look at this, you know, I'm here to calm all your fears, guys. 22%. <laughs> That's why I exist. I can tell the comments. Every time there's a red candle, everyone's like, oh, we're going down. You said we're going up. I'm like, shit. So, yeah, it's 20% here, right? So as, you know, if you can see, we're already down to we're already down 20%, right? And the squeeze is getting tight. I mean, yeah, so this is one of the things. Where I think we're getting close to this type of point where the bands are getting tight. The range is going to get tight. Bands get tight. Range gets tight. The band, the range is going to get tight, guys. The band is getting tight. Now this is on the three-day. Yeah, if you look at, like, the let's start with the two-day. The two-day is already tight here, right? So the two-day is pretty tight. We're just in these tight ranges between 60K and 70K. Ultimately, the main point... You know, unless you're like some kind of degenerate, like high risk, short term trader, you know, I, I think at this point in the cycle, it's better to just hold all coins. Like even if you were, I think it's like good to be able to transform. Right. So sometimes you trade Bitcoin, sometimes at, at key at points like I think we're at right now. I do think it's less risk to start messing with all coins. Right. Um, so I'll get to that in a second. It's kind of what I've been saying for a while. I think our point to break right now is actually 60, like 6.5k about this area. Um, I was looking at the UTXO bands on like last node and there was a lot of movement at that 66k level, which we kind of broke above, but then we had a P POC point right there, right? So if you let this thing zoom in, right, because this is visible, it should update to, yeah, this is kind of exactly where we rejected was this POC on the volume profile. You know, we did get over the order blocks, though, which is a bullish signal. I, I think it's always pretty bullish if we go to the POC. That means we initially got uh, above, like, uh, uh, you know, order blocks uh, resistance. So, yeah, things still look bullish. So if we go down on the daily, I think on the three-day, yeah, we also have a T-day, TD-15, guys. So this thing is in this downtrend. You know, it's going for this, like, final drop type of thing, right? Um... And we're at like a TD15. So this is just like a, you know, it's it's just like a low volatility finish, guys. Things look absolutely bullish. Like, you know, we are, in my opinion, we're still going to go up from here, guys. Uh, the count still remains the same. 
however this resolutes you know uh, i think the important thing is to like i said to look at the weekly because when we look at it at the weekly we don't need to go all the way back to the bottom here we just need a percentage of this wick right of this these order blocks here that it looks like we are going down to grab right now now most likely like if you just do like candlestick analysis guys we're probably just going to back test the 5618 and then go up that's you know the bids are starting to come in so that's exactly like on on external exchanges right so you know the key level here is between like in my opinion 62k to 64k which i do think we're going to hold cuz like i said you know it always depends on liquidations because if we get enough liquidations and then you know it likes to do those sh like quick wicks before it goes up but ultimately the way this is most likely going to resolute guys we're just gonna finish like this and then go up like that right so that's what it looks like on the weekly so let's get rid of that um, and then if you go down on three day we're at a TD 16 like I said we're kinda just going to this low to high 618 right before I think we go up um, so if we look at the daily so the daily is uh, interesting I don't have the if you draw this trend line we're kinda like respected that trend line right and the moving averages that uh, now we're going down like that so Bitcoin is still pretty technical like the way it got to these you know it got to the POC first off right and then it, it also is confluent with these moving averages and this top trend line right so there was a lot of resistance there that's kind of what I said I did think we were kind of gonna go up to 68k to pick up short liquidity before we went down but you know we kind of broke below that trend line we went down so as you can see um, this is why I say that trend lines are you know it's easy to do and it's it's pretty important I think like on the medium time frames right so if you drew up uh, the trend line like that you know there was some time to see like it went sideways a little bit before it ultimately dropped and there was some selling pressure but the other things I'm looking at guys is just the main point I want to reiterate for us swing traders, guys, key on key, you got to determine what you are, right? If you are like a day trader, then you're going to like probably not like me. As a swing trader, I'm just saying this range here is accumulation, right? And that's what I'm iterating. That's what I'll keep reiterating over and over again because based on what I'm looking at, the data, the cycle, where we're at in the cycle, Everything I'm looking at, it, to me, is saying that this is an accumulation. We're going to that 80K to 100K level, like I think, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, we're still kind of, I think we're going to bounce down from this 618. I think we could draw up to 618. I hope you guys are doing this, too. I think we're going to probably respect this 5618. Let's see real quick if there's also um, some confluence support there on the lower time frames right um, yeah there's some support here as well right right here cluster spore you can start looking for some uh, order block uh, confluency right the market likes to move where the confluent order blocks are at guys where there's a lot of confluency right like 618s so that's the good thing about the re fib retracement like I'll show you guys in a second right so this area right here looks pretty good that we're probably gonna respect which is like 63k because the 5618 is there we have uh, confluent order blocks and then also a kind of like a cluster of support right as we can see in this level so if you were to like you know if you were to like get rid of everything I think the easiest way to literally do technical analysis like if you don't want to do anything like if you had to do only one thing in my opinion, the easiest thing to do is just to drop the low to five fib retracement, like that. Like so, if you go and look at, uh, let me just hide my thing real quick, uh, like this, like this, right? Let me put it back. So if you just look at the fib retracement, like the low to high, you just see which of these fib retracements, like the three eight two fifty or six one eight, stacks up with cluster and order blocks. Because always there's going to be one fib retracement here that stacks with other things. And that's where the market's going to move to. So you look at the fib retracement here at the 50, right? Like, are there order blocks there? There's order blocks here. There's order blocks here. And there are order blocks here, right? So where is that stack? That stacks exactly with the 50 right there at 63.5K. 
then what you could do is say you know is that the cluster of support there as well and you could see this here right here this area right here there's definitely cluster of support so in my opinion the, the 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 big like area that the market is going to move to is this 63.5 k level right so something like this i think is very likely guys don't panic i do think we're going back up right so that was a quick analysis on like the lower time frames that was medium and lower time frames i don't think there's anything else to see here besides you know we still have that liquidity up to this uh 67 uh k above region like i think we're gonna hit let's just go through this real quick i know guys are lazy you know they don't like doing things themselves but you know there's still liquidity up to 68k you know that i do think we're gonna pick <laughs> it looks like this thing right here is really <laughs> someone i think giga short uh, giga long here or something try to get that bottom i you know this is probably gonna go a little lower guys to pick up that yellow thing right there so yeah, they're still here, but there's still a lot of liquidity up there. So if you go to look at or 11 minutes, in. if you go look at three day, still liquidity up to uh, 68k, right? One week, still liquidity up to 68k, and then ultimately, you know, on the one month, we still have liquidity between 71k and 74k that I do think we're gonna grab. So let's just change gears, guys. You know, I want to look at my. Uh, some metrics here in you know, the golden ratio multipliers above this level as, as well as getting to about the 62.5 63k level guys which is stacked with that area that i just said so that area the bids are coming in too so don't panic guys we're, we're gonna bounce here very very likely and the funding and open interest is at a low point the open interest got completely flush you know the open interest did go up with this run up that's probably one of the reasons why this uh this 67k area got respected you know the degeners started longing right and they saw my videos and they're like oh shit ta notepad is bullish we better do like a 20x long and then then they got liquidated and they're like ta notepad you said we're going up bro i'm like bro what are you doing so you know the net funding is down is flushed open interest is going back down a little bit you know the main thing i think the, the main bullish thing was that this flush right here that happened right this stuff is just like you know it's just going to take a round to reverse but it's going to reverse this is a very interesting chart guys the real volume and volatility you know is going down and then this drop did have this little like bounce this on but the the good news here is that this is going down right so the the volume and the volatility is still going down as this thing is in a correction this is a very very bullish signal guys as long as bitcoin ranges here like i think it is and the volatility and volume keeps going down it is an extremely extremely bullish signal guys so like i said don't worry and the macd is completely at the bottom of the range right and it crossed and if we get a double cross from the bottom of the range it's going to be super duper bullish guys so things are still looking bullish if you look at the way the rsi looks this looks like a a b c d e and this this right here looks like a wedge finish right so like i said guys don't panic everything to me still looks bullish if you look at my model that i like to show periodically you know we had this high points here and the price dropped where the low points of this purple line and you know this is at a very low point right now and it's very bullish signal right as this thing has gone completely down and we are kind of at the bottom of the range here guys so stuff looks bullish i want to i want to switch up guys i think i'm going to start charting total three right it's a long video already but um you know bitcoin and ethereum are 60 percent of the market right now guys or 70 percent of the market liquidity and i think that market liquidity is going to be rotating into you know total three every other altcoin right so i think i'm going to start charting total three guys and and if you look at total three and i wanted to do this like without any drawings first i'm going to leave my indicator indicators up right but i'm going to show you guys my count and everything and what's going on so this might be a long video i guess so you know this right here looks like either a one two and we're still looking for a third right uh, this is still my count guys uh, one two three four five right so you know what I like to do that's what I initially I do something like that and then I just start looking like if there is like confluency and stuff so this was right in between the two six five and three which is you know this area right here is getting to a hot spot for a wave three and also like doing the pitchfork 
just to get tells, right? So the pitchfork doesn't really tell us anything. Oh, I did get to the top of the pitchfork. So either way, it looks like we're going for a wave three here, guys. And if you look at the way this looks, this kind of looks similar to a lot of things, right? We're looking for this impulse finish like this, right? So if we go down, you know, let's do this as four and then let's change this to like a bigger, yeah, that looks pretty neat. So one thing we can know here is that these points right here are getting shorter, right? Like this wave right here, we got sh we're still in the one to one to two ick. I think what we're looking for here is kind of like a one to one extension to this point right here. It kind of looks right. I also want to point out this bullish divergence is in play because we've had a green candle close last week already. So we are playing this bullish divergence point like that, guys. Um, so this is still my count here. I do think this is a uh, one, two, three, four, five that we're looking for. My scripts are kind of picking up this channel as well, right? And we could also start doing like, uh, what I like doing is, uh, I'm gonna show you guys some cool techniques, right? So, you know, the this right here is pretty nice, 900 billion to like 1 trillion level, right? If you do the expansion of this range, the one two three six and to the one six eight one a is kind of like a hot spot and it has the right look right you know what we kind of want to see is this thing to put up a bearish divergence like this as we get to a high point that would pre that would be a pretty neat finish for like a wave three right so that's kind of what we wanted to look at what other thing i also wanted to do uh, of the accumulation of that we had of this one two point i also want to do the two point two seven right so we tag the three. So like I said, this area right here, there is a lot of confluency, guys, that I do think we're gonna go up to tag, right? You can see that confluency of these fib levels, top of Bollinger Bands, some moving averages here. So this is still the this is still the b uh, playbook here, guys. That's what it looks like on the total three on the one week. We are looking for a run up. Um, you start looking down on like three day. This is kind of similar to BTC. You know, we are respecting that top trend line. There is a bullish divergence in play like this. You know, if you were to ask me what this is, it looks like an ABC down, and we are simply looking for a one two. So you know, a hot spot for a wave two is pretty much your fifty six one eight. The other thing I want to point out, and this move down there was decreasing volume, which is a good thing, right? So if you go down on the daily, I think we could start doing some work on the daily, right? So the main thing I wanna see here, the volume is decreasing on this correction. So this still looks like a correction. You know, this looks like some kind of WXY. This is either your finish, or maybe we do something like this, right? I think like drawing chart patterns here is pretty good as well just to have these open. So, you know, the area that I'm paying for, which is kind of confluence with, Bit with Bitcoin, right, is this uh, 5618 area, right? And we want to kind of look for these order blocks, right? So there's uh, some order blocks here and a volume cluster. So this is definitely the area that we want to pay attention to. It's about 633 billion, right? Kind of interesting to note that we broke out of the top trend line. We might be back testing it. And uh, these two lines in the back are starting to cross bullish, which is a pretty good indicator on the daily. You know, on the daily, sometimes you want to see two crosses, though. But it looks like just one cross from the bottom of the range has been a pretty good indicator, right? As long as it's from the bottom of the range, like that point, while well, the squeeze is tight. Squeeze is not that tight, though, here but we are about to cross up, which is kind of a good thing. This kind of looks like a hidden, like a inverse head and shoulders pattern. Like I'm saying, guys, a lot of things to me look bullish, just off technicals that I'm looking at, like that, right? There is some confluency to this range. If we get here, we're pretty close to it though, right? So if you go on the medium time frames, you can kind of start counting, you know, if this is this an impulse? So, you know, I just want to keep track of, I, in, the, in the next video, this video has gone too long, guys. I'll do the work beforehand. You know, this is kind of like me, you know, raw doing the work while I'm making the video, which I think is kind of important because then you could see how I get to my conclusions, right, of like how things look. Um, 
I would say that this is just an impulse like that, guys. Uh, you know, in my opinion, we don't want to assume anything else. Yeah, like for me personally, I I would just assume that this point is your bottom, and we're looking for like a an impulse point right here, right to that 630, 630 billion level, right? This does look like a uh, a completed impulse though, right? I mean, this third I think is shortest, which is not a good thing. That could also be your third like that or something, right? Cook's a little wonky, but I think that is probably a possibility that you could count it, right? Side volume one. So you go here, one, two, three, four, five. So that this kind of works, right? It, this definitely works. So we're probably looking for an ABC down, right? So just like an ABC down to this, uh, to this 630 billion level. That's where there's confluency, 633, right? So you just put it out like 633 here. Yeah, that looks about right, guys. So, you know, I, I would be expecting, I would pay attention to this thing going to, like, you know, looking for pretty much just an ABC down, guys, like that, right? So that's just a quick update on my thoughts on the market, guys, that I do think, uh, you know, that we are bullish guys so don't panic i'm gonna start updating total three from now on also especially and the main reason is because the bitcoin dominance is at this massive resistance point so i think the money right now is the trading should be in the altcoins guys the trading volume in my opinion this thing does look like though it is a possibility you know because it is back testing a lot of resistance that we might see a final move up like that guys but then that's gonna put up like a lot of uh, a bearish divergence right it's just kind of what we're looking for like if this goes up for one more high move up like that right and we're looking for that bearish divergence finish right or even even back testing any of this level right here I think it's a possibility to just so, so just something to keep in mind right yeah, it's kind of what we're looking for. But I think all the trading shouldn't be done. We just need to keep track of this total three from here, guys. Because the Bitcoin dominance looks absolutely topped out. And it does look like total three is going up for this move up like that to this confluent area right here. Which I think is pretty good right here. Just a quick update on my thoughts, guys. Hope you guys are doing good. Thank you for watching.